In the last video, we learned Coulomb's law told us that the static electric force between two particles is equal to uh, Coulomb's constant, which is you know, k is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th. What was it? It was, it was let's see, we want to get Newton's meter squared per Coulomb squared times the charge in, on the first object, or the first uh, point charge, times the second charge divided by the distance between them. So that's great. If we if I gave you both charges, you could figure out the force and and you knew how far apart they were. But what if I only gave you one of them? And I said, "Well, you know, I'm going to give you one charge and, you know, do as much math as you want, and then I'm going to later give you a bunch of other charges, and then I want you to figure out the force." Well, then you could kind of do your work ahead of time and you could say, "Well, if I just have one charge here, so let's just say I have one charge I don't know, let's call that charge, let's call it big Q. Although we could have called it little q. If we have one charge there, let's figure out ahead of time what the force would be if I'm given another charge later on. So what am I saying? So if this, this, the force between this charge and another charge is going to be, let's, let's call the other charge the imaginary charge that's not there yet. Let's call that q2. So we already know what the force on between these two are. It's going to be so the the force is going to be Coulomb's constant times big Q, which is the the charge that we're given or that we're starting off with, times Q two divided by the distance squared. Right at that point, if Q two is right there. But I just said, you know, we don't know what Q2 is. We just want to do enough math ahead of time so that when someone gives us a Q2, we can very quickly, um, at any point in space, figure out what the force would be. So to do that, what we could essentially just say is, well, well, then what is the force per charge? So let's divide both sides of this equation by Q2. And I'll, I'll get rid of this little sub E because I think it'll just confuse things. So the force per charge, per whatever, wherever Q2 is and whatever Q2 is, we don't know what it is, is going to be equal to k times whatever my charge is divided by d squared. Right? Wherever th that charge I place it, however far it is, that's d, divided by d squared. And this is called the electric field generated by this charge, this charge big Q. And what does that do? How does that help us? Well, if you think about it, we could, let me do it, in fact, instead of just thinking about it. If I were to draw that charge, so let's say it's a point charge right here. That's Q. And then we could say at any point, at any point, if I were to uh, place a charge, how strong is the force going to be? Because we can just 